we have a first impression video on a special kind of tent that I have never really encountered before today. Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back. This tent was sent to me by a company called Tent Tube. Now I did let them know that I would let you guys know that this is based off of a Kickstarter campaign that started in April. But I also did let them know that I would let you know that I would let them know that on this initial impression video, I will give my unbiased opinion as far as the pros, the cons, the good and the bad, the things that I like about it and the things that I feel could use some improvement. Now the tent does come in this bag and let me just get a few of the specs out of the way. The material is, and the weight of this is about three kilograms, which is about 6.6 .6 pounds. I could not find much reviews on this because it is so new. The information that I'm relaying to you is based on the information that they gave on this Kickstarter site. Now this is just the first impression video. What I do have in mind is down the line, I am gonna have a second video that I create for this, which is gonna be a torture test. I'm gonna put it on through severe winds, hopefully rain, and things like that. This is advertised as a four season tent on their Kickstarter. So I do want to put it through um, all the testing through as if it was four seasons. So that is going to be on the second video, which is the torture testing video on this. Now with all the bull crap out of the way, let's go and take a look at this. Now I do want to mention again that I have not taken this out of the bag yet. This is going to be my first time and I'm also going to time how long it takes me to put this together. Now this didn't come with any instructions and they did write a little letter when they sent this to me in a piece of paper saying to let you guys know that this is basically like a prototype copy, which means they're going, they're continually trying to make improvements and it will be reflected on the production version. All I'm gonna do is, is if I do notice anything in here, any flaws or anything like that, I'm gonna point it out and hopefully they get it repaired or fixed or address it by the time the mass production of it occurs. The last I checked on the Kickstarter campaign, they did reach their goal, so I believe they are manufacturing these at this time. I forgot my cell phone in the truck and I don't wanna hike all the way back to getting it. So I'm gonna show you exactly um, what time it is on my watch. So it's about 3.41. I'm gonna get this started and let's see how long it takes. All right, well, there you go. That was basically it. Uh, it's about 3.46 right now. Yep, 3.46. So that was about five minutes after some searching for that hole because obviously it's the first time I couldn't, uh, I didn't know where the hole was. That's not the first time I said that either. But once I was able to find it, just had to stick in the pump and, and start pumping. When, from the time of actual starting to pump, and the pump in itself and getting it fully inflated, it take take about less than a minute, which is actually what is advertised on our Kickstarter saying that it takes about a minute to inflate. So let me give you a little tour and give you some more information on what I'm looking at here. So right out of the bag, what you do get, you do get some stakes over here. Looks like uh, some guidelines. Um, I do have concerns about the thickness of this, of these stakes. It looks like potentially aluminum. And here is the tent. Now, before I opened this packaging, I was kind of concerned as far as the material of these uh, inflatable tent poles. What they're claiming or what they're saying is that this is a double layered uh, polyester reinforced uh, poles. Now, I can tell you right off the bat, it does feel, I do feel strength in it. They say that you can leave this inflated without having to repump it for 10 days, I believe. It would be almost like a canvas type material, but not quite as thick or strong. As you can see, you got some D-ring loops for guy outlines. You got some plastic reinforcements here. And I believe this is here so that it could help maintain the structure of this uh, tent system. Now, this was the pump that came with this tent. And over here, you see it says that you got your deflate and your inflate. So I'm guessing if you're going to deflate it, you would connect this hose on this side. So when it's time for me to deflate this tent, I would have to put it on this side. And I'm guessing I would have to just insert it to where the hole is. and. It, hopefully it would auto deflate or I might have to pump it out. Now this was the hole that I was looking for here. Now 
the cool thing about this is that after you're done pumping it, it doesn't deflate when you take the pump out. There is a valve inside that prevents air from coming back out. Now, in my torture testing, I do want to see if it does deflate overnight. But according to their claims on their Kickstarter website, they say that it does not. Now, sitting inside, I have about a foot and a half from the top of the tent to my head. That's at the center area. As you can see on the opposite side of this tent, there is a little panel or a flap that you can open and roll up to allow for more ventilation. Also, if you want, you can probably turn this into like a little awning type of deal if you guy out those points right here. So as we get in, you can see there's a pocket. And there's another pocket on either side. And as you can see, this comes with two doors. One is a mesh door and one is the full cover, I'm assuming when it rains. Now this is a single wall tent. Uh, potentially condensation could be an issue. Now the benefit to this type of design in this tent is that even if it's if the weather is adverse outside, if it's raining or windy, uh, you can just stake out the corners and just inflate the air poles and you wouldn't have to worry about the inside of the tent getting wet. Now I'm about 5'11 and I'm gonna lay inside to see how much of my headspace is available if I have my foot against the wall. So with myself sprawled out in there, I have about, about three or four inches above my head. So it's not the roomiest of tents. Now all around this tent, around the poles, you got the D-rings over here and the D-rings are made of plastic. My concern would be these becoming brittle possibly breaking. So my suggestion would be to potentially have maybe a stronger, either thicker or aluminum D-rings on this tent. It does feel like a thick fabric for sure. It is definitely noticeably thicker than some of the backpacking tents that I do uh, carry with me. But ultimately the main concern when you have a tent like this with this kind of system and this kind of structure is the strength of those air poles. If you're gonna replace aluminum ones, how will it stand in the rain? How will it stand in high winds? How will it also stand in snow? And I'm hoping to find that out for you guys as soon as possible. My other concern is the zippers. These are definitely not YKK. So the durability of these will have to be determined over time. The other concern I have would be, what if these got punctured? For whatever reason, what if something were to puncture uh, the poles. According to the their side information, it says that these are multi-chambered so that if one side does get punctured, then other sides will stay inflated and you wouldn't have to worry about that. And then you could repair it at a later point in time. That I want to see. So during my torture test, I am planning to also puncture uh, one of these tent poles and seeing how, what will happen to the tent once that has been done. This is at about six and a half pounds. So that's about equivalent to some of the you know, the thicker four season tents like the Heliberg or you got the Fjall Ravens. All the uh, double walled four season tents are about that weight. But would I take it backpacking? To be honest, I'm not sure. But it does take up a lot of real estate in your pack, which means once this is folded up, as you can see the bag that I was holding up earlier, it's pretty big. And then plus you'd have to carry that pump unless you can carry um, an electric pump, which also adds more weight to your pack. Uh, if you don't want to carry an electric pump, you would have to carry that or maybe even a smaller foot type pump but that would also require more effort. So for me, I think this would be more of an appropriate car camping tent. Let's say you go to a car campsite and you know you don't wanna to have to mess with poles or anything like that. You just wanna set up a tent real quick. This would be pretty convenient for that. And under a minute, you just gotta you know, inflate it as you saw me do and you pretty much have this structure. It is definitely um, not an average ordinary looking tent, that's for sure. It's definitely gonna stand out at a campsite. What I plan to do is I am gonna take this car camping I am going to put myself, Katie, and our dog Bernie in here and see how that fares. So yeah, that's the initial impression. It's hard to say if I would recommend this or not at this point in time because of the tent tube, which kind of, like I said, I'm, I'm sure many of you feel is that's the uncertainty right here, right? That is what I want to test first before I can make any sort of solid recommendation. But I will say this, if I were to, let's say on a stormy day, I just wanted to go camping and I just wanted to be able to set up a pitch a tent real quick, quick and easy and just relax somewhere. Or let's say it started right when I if, when I went car camping this would be pretty convenient you just inflate it set it up and just go in all right so I thought you were supposed to put that pump in into the deflate section but that's not how you do it you just take unscrew the cap and then it'll just automatically deflate as you can see it deflated pretty quick all right so I'm gonna just go and pack this up and get the heck out of here 
Alright, so I was able to stuff it back in. Kind of had to roll it up way, the best way I could. Now I am going to say something about rolling it up. It does take some time to deflate the poles. I mean it deflates pretty quick but at the same time you got to make it completely deflated. It t does take some patience. As you can tell in the video I had to kind of press down on it with my knees and, and whatnot. But that happens with anything that you inflate. It does feel like it barely fits in the bag once you do take it out initially. So stay tuned on a future video we are going to have a torture test done on this one. Put it through its paces and see if it's actually a tent that is reliable and worth spending your money on. So if you enjoyed this video consider giving hitting the like button. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. Play some comments. What do you think about this tent? What flaws do you notice or what improvements do you think could be made? Uh, what do you like about it? What do you not like about it? Is this something you would pick up for your camping, car camping, backpacking trip? Let me know. Let's have a discussion about it. I want to thank you guys for coming by again. Be safe, take care, and I'll see you next time.